Hi everyone and welcome to a very exciting demonstration of how you can use Power BI and integrate that for project finance modeling. I'm going to step through a project finance model. This is a solar project that was built on a tool called OpenBox. Now OpenBox is a tool that exists. It's an Excel add-in that allows you to build models very quickly and it's really powerful in how to reuse some of the content and the components. This demonstration is not about open box, but really just broadly, how do I integrate project finance models into Power BI? Now one would say, well, why would you want to do that? Um, project finance models are quite complex and why don't I just create the dashboards in Excel? For sure, if you're on a single transaction, that makes a lot of sense. But let's say you're an asset manager and you have a range of these project finance models and quite often the models are quite large. So sometimes you have to open up the models, run them, update them, and that can be a big process. Let's say you wanted to aggregate or get a portfolio view of all your project finance models. Well, that is very difficult because you can't open all of them. And yes, you can build multiple linked workbooks, but that becomes quite complex. So using Power BI allows you to integrate and connect multiple workbooks into a single Power BI report. What you're going to see here is an integration of a Power BI model into the underlying solar project model. I'm also going to change some scenarios and use cases, and you're going to see the Power BI workbook and the report being refreshed. So let's get into it. So firstly, we're going to show you the project finance model. So here's the solar project model. As I said, this model was built on OpenBox. Um, pretty straightforward. It's a fast designed model in terms of its structure. There's uh, assumptions, there's static assumptions, and then there's obviously further inputs and constants in terms of information. Here we have our different uh, cases, case one, case two, case three, and we can change that here in terms of the case comparison. And going down, we have all our key assumptions. Then we have our time series, and going across, we have our model checks. We have our operations, our operations worksheet with our calculation blocks. We have solar PV revenue, uh, op operating and maintenance cost. Um, we've got escalation factors, working capital, uh, accounts receivable, accounts payable, and the like, tax, deferred revenue, also tax calculations and losses, um, and a range of other key uh, calculations. All of that is being calculated in the Excel workbook. We then have debt. We have two facilities in debt. We have a revolving credit facility, the RCF, um, and then we have a senior debt facility. We have some key uh, metrics, the uh, debt service cover ratio or DSCR and our internal rate of return or IRR. Uh, we have some equity cash flows, retained earnings, equity balances, dividends, and the like. Uh, all of that is available, but, and of course your solar asset. We have our outputs, uh, annual, and we have our detailed uh, reports. But the most important thing I wanna put your attention to is the extra sheets in this workbook. The first is the Power BI table. Uh, by the way, this table gets generated automatically by OpenBox. It's one of the modules. Um, it just dumps all the information so I don't have to cross link. But what I'd like you to look at is the additional Power BI export tab, which we're gonna need to use for the purposes of extracting all the key financial information from the model, including the set of chart of accounts and the structure of the model. So here we're using index. Um, you can, of course, use dynamic arrays um, and unique and things like that. Um, but of course, just for simplicity, we've stuck with index. So over to the right here, we have our key chart of account structure and our key tables that we're going to be using in Power BI for um, our indexing of our balance sheet and our income statement um, and cash flow so that we can show relevant items in the right areas within the PL matrix balance sheet and cash flow. So we use this indexing and it also allows us to show the account name and the chart of account structure. So let's go over to um, our Power BI now. So what we can see here is we have our solar project model, we have overview, profit and loss, balance sheet, cash flow and debt. Uh, if I click through all of these, I can see all of the different cases. I can get an overview of all of that. I'm not going to go through each page. It's pretty straightforward. At the top, you have your different slices. You can look at your different quarters. So I can look at quarter one in FY25, um, and I can compare that to quarter one in FY27 if I wanted to. Um, and anything else that I really wanted to focus on um, is really quite powerful. But really what I want to do here is actually compare the different cases and the different versions of the model. 
So let's go back to our Excel model. Let's go back to our uh, input assumptions. And what we can see here right now, we've got case one. Uh, this case is got, has got a 14.8% IRR. We can see our total revenue, 364 million. And if I was just to change this to number two, I go control S for save. I save the model. I then go back to Power BI. I click refresh and we should see an improvement in the IRR. We should see the revenue change and all of the key metrics and information. So um, I'll just move this across. Uh, we can see 14.8%, 364. Once that's completed and uh, refreshed, uh, we'll see the update. So 18.4% and 411 million in terms of total revenue. If we wanted to see what's driving that, we can see each of those particular assumptions in this workbook. Um, and actually go through each of the different cases side by side. So we can see the availability is different, the pricing of the power tariffs different. We've also got different operating expenses. So that's what's gonna drive the main differences. If I change this to case number three, in our case number three, you'll see that also jumps across with the, with the arrow. Uh, Control S, so we're gonna save the workbook. Um, then I'm just gonna click refresh in Power BI. Then this is going to allow us now you could be saving these workbooks, um, uploading them to SharePoint or OneDrive um, and connecting all of these different uh, workbooks into Power BI quite easily. So here we can see the IRL's gone, gone down to 7.4% and total revenue 295. Of course, all that time we've also got uh, implications on debt. So lower debt um, as, uh, as a result of Big, better performance in this case the performance is low so we're actually using a bit more of the revolving credit facility so let's go flip back to number two case because i know two cases got a higher irr there's better revenue so in theory what we should be seeing is the revolving credit facility shouldn't be used as much um, and if we update that we can see that the total expenses um, in terms of our interest uh, use and the facility um, only in fy22 which is in the initial so that makes sense in terms of the operations and how the models are working. A great way to present the model, a great way to show uh, stakeholders and investors in terms of what they wanna do. The other great thing is you can start to embed your project finance model um, into other pages, into applications, into websites. So here we've done that uh, exact thing. So what we've done is we've embedded into uh, our model citizen website. We have a few images, the ones that you just saw then, um, but more importantly, we've got the ability to actually interact with it. So if I expand that, um, I can now and go have a look at and interact with um, this financial model all within the website. So um, have a play, go have a look. Um, and if of course you want to download the uh, model or the workbook, then uh, you can simply click here, download. And of course, if you're on Eloquence already, you have the ability to, to purchase that uh, straight away. I hope this has been useful for you in terms of understanding and seeing how Power BI can integrate into Excel models, particularly models that are quite large and complex like project finance models. It doesn't matter what you build the model on, whether you build it on Openbox or Medano or just Excel, um, if you follow the structure and you follow what I've built, uh, you will be able to replicate that. So have a go, um, download it, um, pull it apart. Uh, we have got some interesting complexities around time series. We've got two time series tables in the Power BI file. The reason for that is our debt um, is a different time series to the whole project life. So we don't wanna show the debt visual across all the time periods. We just wanna show the uh, debt facilities over the periods when the debt is actually used, uh, which is why we've got two dates tables, one for the core model and another dates uh, table just for the debt facilities. So that's not quite typical for uh, financial models in Power BI or Power BI in general. Generally, we say you should only have one dates table. So look out for that and a few other nice little hidden gems in there. It's uh, really, really powerful stuff um, in terms of integrating Power BI with Excel and for financial models, including um, project finance and solar projects. Thanks everyone and hope you enjoyed the model. Cheers, bye.